For this segment, we're going to discuss the generation of load combos, and then we'll schematically show how we want to lay out tendons and start modeling our um, design strips that are going to be used to check stresses and uh, pro provide reinforcement for the slab along those strips. So we'll start with that. Um, we have a system here where this is kind of two-way here, well, maybe two-way here, and then one-way here where we're spanning kind of this way. And we're, we're really going to design this almost as two-way, but we're only going to have distributed tendons, you know, in the vertical Y direction. Um, so what we'll do is we're going to add PT along the beams. This might be a, a live, live, two-end pole. And we'll anchor here, something like this. And then we'll also have another pole along here. We, we may not actually have tendons here, but we want to feed pre-compression into you know, this zone in, in this direction. So we'll have distributed cables here to here that'll have two spans, two cantilevers. Distributed cables here will have one span, one cantilever, and then distributed cables here, again, that go from here to this edge two spans, two cantilevers. So that will be the layout of the tendons, and that's going to help guide and kind of dictate where we want to have design strips. So we're also going to use um, the depth of the beams to provide uh, and take advantage of some of that uplift um, to alleviate some of the stress at the beam and then kind of creeping in towards the slab. So we don't need, we don't need to max out the drapes in those beams, but we definitely want to take advantage if needed um, take advantage of the depth of those beams. So the beams will technically be PT beams along along these bands. Um, in this core region, we're going to just ignore it. So that's RC. We're going to say, you know, if we wanted to design that separate from this, we could end up generating strips here. There's no PT running through the strips, and we could design all of that region in the same slab. So. But for this, for the intent of this video and this tutorial, we're going to just ignore that that region. So that's how we'll lay out some of the PT and and again the strips. Um, if we go back to loading load combinations, we want to evaluate crack deflection and long term deflection for the for the model. So we need to add that to our list of combinations. We have the combinations necessary to evaluate stress and to also determine um, reinforcement for gravity-only purposes, but we also need to evaluate long-term deflection with consideration of cracking. So what I'll do is set this to crack deflection. We want to dictate to the program a couple of combinations that we'll check cracking for. This could be set up very specific to a particular um, set of, of uh, sequential loads added to a structure. So this is just one example of how loads can be or how load combinations can be set to cracking. It's not you know the only way that this can be done. It's really user specific and job specific in terms of setting these up. So we're going to add two crack deflection combinations. The first one will be called total CR. Second, we'll call sustain CR. They're both set to crack deflection. Total will be one times self weight, essentially one times all um, gravity loads and one times pre stressing. Sustained will be 0.3 times self weight, or excuse me, 0.3 times live load, one times all other. And then we're going to use a long term deflection combination to um, essentially isolate the live load. So we're going to take total minus sustain to extract out that 0.7 times live load and whatever the deflection is relative to that. So I'll go slide this over and um, assign this as 1 times total minus 1 times sustained CR. Okay, I'll add one more combo. And this will be called, let's call this long-term deflection. And this will be three times sustained load. So we're assuming 
in service. This is a creep factor, a creep multiplier of 2.0 plus the instantaneous sustain equal to 3. So we'll have 3 times the um, sustained deflection plus the incremental live load deflection. So we'll do that. We'll say 3 times sustained plus 1 times incremental live load. Okay, so that's those are the those are the combinations we're going to use to evaluate cracking in the slab and long-term deflection. We'll say OK, and we'll now start to um, generate our support lines. So I want to um, turn off the display of the loads that might conflict with what we're trying to snap when we're doing support lines. So remember, we can go to default display. And that turns everything off except for the structural components. To set the default display, we'll go to visibility under view settings. You would define what's selected here. Select save as default, and that would set the default display. So let's go ahead now under floor design. We're going to create X direction support lines. And I'll move from left to right, creating these. I'll use my snap to nearest just to snap to a point out on the slab edge. We might be going down and, and just making sure that those are deselected as we as we use them. And I'm going to snap just to the vertical supports. And then I'll snap here to close that off. Again, I'll start here. And I'll just work my way left to right on this end. And then I'll use snap to the perpendicular. Now for those support lines, if I double click, we want to make sure that those are set to the proper design type. Those are actually beam beams. So we're going to set this to beam, not two-way slab. And I'll do the same here. Okay, and then we'll we'll go ahead and add a support line along here. So I'll go back to create X direction support line. Again, use snap to nearest. And I want to turn that off because it makes it a little bit difficult to snap to um, the center line of, of the supports when we have it turned on. And here I'll just snap to one end of the beam and I'll go and snap to different points along um, support. So I'll snap to this support, for example, maybe this support. This helps with the placement of minimum reinforcement along this path. So we want to snap to fairly well-defined supports along the path. And then we'll go back and finish that off there. Okay, that's support line two. Now in this case, this will be a two-way slab support line versus a beam support line. So I'll make that change to two-way slab. And before I actually start modeling, in this case, I'm going to go to Modify Properties of Items, and I can change this to beam before I actually start in on the modeling. So previously I had done it after. Here I did it prior to placement of the support line. Okay, and we have this support line done. So those are the the X direction support lines. We have three three X direction support lines, and we'll now do the same thing in the Y direction. I'll go back to floor design, create support lines in the Y. We can always press backspace if we make a mistake. Okay, here I'm going to again use this tool, snap on the edge. Now I'll exit out of the command. I'm going to select it and I'll use um, Control Shift C to copy using a reference point. We could also just select it go to modify and we could use um, the option for in plane translation and that allows us to just copy using a reference point so we can say copy okay 
the only difference is we have a tiny dialog that will appear. So if we use Control Shift C, we can just select the reference point and then move this over and copy it a little bit easier. And I'll just select these four. Remember, they take on the previous setting in terms of design. So by default, that's the, the rule in the program. The, the properties always take on the last set property. Um, that can be modified under Home Settings. You can change that under General Settings. And you can see Use the Properties of the Last Modified Component, same as the default. So I'm, I'm selecting these so that I can go and modify the selection under Support Line. We'll modify these to, um, to two-way slab criteria. We'll say OK. All right, and then finally I'll copy this. This is actually already set to Beam, so we'll do Control-Shift-C again. Say copy from here over to here. And then finally, we just have these one-way slab support lines to generate. So um, we'll go back to floor design under create Y direction. And I'll go to the properties, a different location here, and set this to one-way slab. And now, again, if I use snap to nearest, I can snap on this, this edge. And I'll create this one-way slab support line. I'm just going to terminate the support line at the center of the support, which here is a beam. So we'll, we'll use that, and then I can take this again, Control-Shift-C, and just snap to each of these points. And we're done with the um, support lines in that direction. Now we, we need to add splitters for these support lines. So we'll go back. I'm going to turn off the support lines in the um, in the Y direction, so I'll turn off Y direction support lines. Let me get out of here. This allows us to control the visibility X, Y. So we have X off on, Y off on, both off on. I'll go to Y direction, and I'm going to add support lines, uh, or excuse me, splitters here. I'm going to add another splitter here. And I'm going to add a splitter here, along here. So this essentially bounds off this region from having any des uh, design cuts going through it. So these are basically virtual boundaries that we're uh, creating. And I'll use this option to create a splitter for the X direction. Okay, and we want to make sure we snap on the proper points. So we'll just add a splitter at the end of this support line vertically to the edge of the slab. The next one will go from the end point to this support line below. That creates the boundary on the right side. The same thing happens on the left side. And then I'll create a splitter from, um, I want this point to be selected here. So I'll use a snap to vertices of components to be able to snap to that point. And then I can turn that off, and I'll just use snap perpendicular on the opposite end. So we'll go all the way over to the opposite end, use snap perpendicular here, and now we have our splitters for the X. Okay, I'll exit by selecting Escape. I'll turn off my X direction support lines and splitters, and I'll turn on my um, Y direction strips. <clears throat> and in this case, we're going to have a support line or a splitter that goes here. And again, we want to bound off this region. So I'll have another splitter here and here. OK, this we're going to use Y direction splitters. And I'll start that at just one of the endpoints of the support lines. And here I can just chain this support line along these ends of, of, or the splitter along the ends of the support lines. And again, we'll go from here down to the location where we want to bound off this core region. Okay, so everything else terminates at the perimeter of a slab, and that 
by default that would allow the program to dictate where the design strips are going to be. The program will use these design strips and splitters to generate the slab into um, or to subdivide the slab into design strips. So that's the next step of the process and the step prior to starting to place tendons that we're going to, to, um, to look at. And if we go to this option for generate sections new, this will generate both design tributaries or strips and the section cuts. And I'll select this. And after selecting that, we can see all of the design cuts in the slab relative to the support lines. Here we're showing X and Y section cuts and support lines. If I wanted to, uh, to change the direction, again, I could turn off both directions. Let me turn off these splitters here. I'll turn off those splitters. Okay, I'll go to the X direction first, and I can turn on the tributary regions, off and on. Or I could go to the Y direction, turn on the tributary regions, off and on. Okay, and you can see these are the design strips that the program will evaluate for check of stress. Um, they're going to contain tendons uh, in the strips that participate in the moment resistance when we integrate over the design cut length for actions at the centroid of, this, of the section cut. The tendons will be there to participate again in developing capacity for the section and then the program will add additional reinforcement for that section. And that will be um, some of the content we look at in later tutorials. Thank you.